Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Wednesday morning class. Thank you for you that are here in person and also to you that might be joining us uh, today live on streaming. We want to welcome you also. And if you catch this later, we also welcome you to this Wednesday class. The Wednesday, Wednesday class is a very open class in which we can just indulge ourselves into the banquet of new possibilities of how that we can look at ourselves, each other, and the world. And one thing we're finding is there's not just one timeline, but there are many timelines. And I, I remember that in the 10 o'clock thing, uh, somewhat, while River's coming through, but talking about how that we get stuck on one show on the television, then we go, oh no, this is too violent, this is too whatever for me. And then we put in three different numbers and we get a whole different story. And, oh, this is a nice story. And they're going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right? The violent story is going on if you're on that frequency. But if you change the frequency and you find a different show that makes you feel good and it's peaceful and whatever. So we have options. We have options. And, and I do think that using that example is a very... Uh, correct in the sense of this opening up of multi-dimension consciousness and this idea of multiverses and all of this that's happening right now that we do have choices and of course what does the ego want us to do it wants to keep us in 3d and try to fix it so it looks like 5d don't you get that instead of bringing 5d in as a norm where we can live, move, and have our being. It wants us to spend all the time trying to work in changing something that's already available to us within the realm of consciousness itself. So we're here not to tune 5D, we're here to tune our consciousness to 5D. That's what the class is about. How do we tune our consciousness to match the 5D frequency so that it can become a part of our everyday consciousness. Just like every day, you're, all, you're almost unconscious of much of what you got up, uh, woke up today. You wake up, you stumble in, probably get your coffee, first thing, some of us, and that's the first thing you do, and then you got to, you know, do a breakfast or whatever you do, and then you got to brush your teeth, and you got to take a shower, and you just do these things because they are so ingrained in the 3D living uh, that we do, we hardly have to think about it. Well, imagine what the, uh, what the new norms of 5D the things that we struggle to do spiritually in 3D become the natural law of 5D. See what I'm saying? And that's why people think that we can solve racism uh, within the 3D model. Probably never going to happen. At this point, I think we've done everything. We changed the law. We, we've... we've demonstrated we've had great uh teachers uh and 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 awakeners uh, uh and so much has been done in 3d to give us the opportunity to grow up and to move out of some of these isms that has so plagued us in in 3d and we just haven't done it we just haven't done it and i'm not sure we will do it because i'm not sure that there is a answer in 3d that started the problem so that the answer's got to be in another dimension. And that's why I love, always love the scripture, I will answer you before you ask. I thought, how does that happen? God said, I will answer you before you even ask for anything. How could you know? Because it's already existing on another level and another dimension. So just think about how important this focus on frequency is that's going on in the world today. I just recently spoke on this shift thing, which is uh, tons of sound people was on that. I mean, there's people, I don't know how many, how many? 40. 40 speakers speaking on sound in, throughout the world on this. And I mean, in 22 years, how I've seen the growth of it. You know, how I've seen more and more and more and more and more people. When we were out there kind of alone with, especially teaching technique, other people had tuning forks and whatever, but we're kind of the 
first ones I believe that showed up and said, we have a technique to teach you something, how to use them. And people were saying, well, I have tuning forks, but I don't know what to do with them. And that's where Soma Energetics has filled a great place in being able to empower people with, with technique and the usage of, of vibration and sound. And the reason is because the universe is, I want you to have access to a greater amount of frequencies than the one you're caught in. Oh, I just feel this coming on. You know, this comes back to this, this, these boundaries of 3D. And when it comes to frequencies and sound, especially we in the West have been locked into this 12-tone temperament of closed octave. Hmm? Yeah, we think the only music and sound we hear has to be A, B, C, D, F, uh, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, C to C. And we, and we all love that kind of music because we was raised on it. It's the first music that was probably, uh, we downloaded, if you're born in, in America, is songs that were made on those 12 notes, that closed octave. But if you read this and study it, which is in Soma Energetics, there's research on it, but it talks about how in 12-tone temperament is boxed thinking. See, they've even boxed us in by the music. Do you remember a few years ago when Muzak admitted the fact that they had inserted sublineal messages into the music to get people to buy certain products? You don't even know. You walk in and you don't even know what toothpaste to get and all of a sudden that one catches your eye out of all the toothpaste are there because you've received sublineally somebody really good looking brushing their teeth with that toothpaste and you didn't even subconsciously realize that you reacted to that product. Yeah, I started studying sublineal advertising back in the 70s. Uh, uh, I, I wondered why, for instance, it was, uh, on the back of Time magazine would be this picture of a glass of, of uh, ice and there'd be some liquor pouring into it and then the ice. And the, if you look deeply into the ice, there's orgies going on. It's so subtle, you would not see it at all, but there's sexual things going on, and it's stimulating, and that's why they would pay a half a million dollars for that page to advertise. It was more than a picture, but it was a sublineal message to manipulate us, and we've been manipulated in 3D all along and sold the illusion we are free. We have been slaves of 3D. I know there's slavery within slavery, but we've all been slaves to the higher echelon. Let's just put it out there. Right. Let's just put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think that it's been important for us to understand uh, gener uh, Genesis 6 4 about the giants and, and those who have come onto the planet that had great technology that we did not, uh, we, I'm not saying we, but those on the planet did not have who were the evolution of the planet. Now, just a minute, I've got to get you to. Focus on something. Why are you here? Why are you here listening to this? Why were you attracted in the first place to come to a place like Heartlight or, or any new thought or metaphysical group that you've been to? Well, what, what gave you the strength to even though your family, you knew you were going to change the dynamic of the family by stepping out of the tribe, by stepping out of the tradition of the family, the thing that glued the tribe together. You, you found yourself, and as I say, we white people were the black sheep of our family. Black people are the white sheep of their family. But everybody had that something different about them. And it's like you didn't, nobody taught it to you. That's something that's not taught to you. It's something that's innately woven into the fabric of your soul. That's why I so believe in what happened before we came and incarnated is so important right now because I think it has been asleep in us at the subconscious level that we have forgotten the agreements and contracts and, and the things that we said that we would come here and experience. And, and, and when you don't understand the things that you gave uh, permission to and co-created that you experience that don't feel good, then... The ego translate that as what's wrong with you? Where'd you fail? Why are you not good enough? Why well, I've been meditating and praying for 20 years. So some things you can pray and pray and pray for that's not going to change because you said yes. 
to that experience. And you know why? I'm going to be honest with you. Because God, whatever you want to call it, in you wanted to experience it. God wanted hands in 3D. Here they are. Look at your hands. God wanted eyes to see through 3D experience. God wanted to, how do we think as human beings? So God put his mind in our brain. Yeah. And I could do a whole thing on that, but I won't. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we are God's person, persona in 3D. And God took on a flesh human body. And guess what? 2,000 years ago, Yeshua woke up to it. Nobody else had. I don't, I've read a lot of history of old teachers and all the way from Pharaohs to whatever. I didn't find any of that as great as it all is. I didn't find anybody who dared to say, the divine is in me as me. When you've seen me, You've seen the Father. Oh, breathe. I love it. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because the Father, the Spirit was fathering his cellular development. He didn't have a physical body like us. Because something else was fathering every new cell that was being created and made and he tried to tell us that same blueprint is inside you and once you remember it and discover it and focus on it and give it life and bring it forth into activity it will change the whole cellular replication and you'll have a new body and this new body will not have blood running through it, for the blood will be transmuted into light. And where blood runs in your veins, light shall run into your veins. Look it up. Check me out and see if science does not tell you that blood is congealed light. When you see blood, you're seeing light trapped in a low, dense, three-dimensional frequency. Raise the frequency, and the blood transmutes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> 4D, we could stay on forever because that is a lot of our experience right now. And I, I just feel like we need to move on. But let's do remember that 4D is the what we're calling as an archetype of a story, the wilderness experience. It is the wilderness experience. I found a scripture I wanted to share with you about when I talk about things like uh, Israel being in bondage for 430 years of slavery under Egypt and how that their goal was the promised land that it promised to them where milk and honey would flow and the, the uh, grapes were huge and plentiful. I mean, this is where they wanted to go. And they didn't want to be in slavery. But when they got into the wilderness, they wished they were back in the slavery again. Hmm? Because they had a meal and they had something. They got out there and they thought they were going to die in the wilderness. But let me show you why using these are as good. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened, and it's talking about the stories, especially of the, 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 the story of Israel. Now all the things happened to them for examples are written down for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age are come. In their story is our story. So I'm not going back and talking thousands of years ago. I'm telling you there is a universal story running through the stories of history. Here's the trouble. People get stuck in religion back into history. 
And they don't understand that history contains the mystery. Hmm? So it's not about his history. And mostly it's his. They're all hises <laughs> in the Bible. There's not a lot of her history. Some, it's, it's in there. It's woven. But mostly it's, it's a male patriarchal Yahweh, Jehovah story uh, of things like that. But in that is my story. That's what we're looking for. I'm not looking for their story, his story, her story. I'm looking for my story. What is my story? And you hear that in the word mystery. My story, mystery. So we're here to finish the mystery of God. Just think about it. In you is the mystery of God. And the Bible says, when the mystery of God is finished, time shall be no more. Time is what? 4D. 4D. Remember? Three space, four time. Space time. And what does that mean? What does that mean, time? What are we talking about? Time, time what? Time, what, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And what happens in the dimension of time? It does. That is true. But also, what happens for us? It is time for all of our codes to be reactivated. And Jesus came at the fullness of time. And in the fullness of time shall he gather all things together in heaven and in earth. There are seasons and times and cycles we talked about not long ago, December 21st, of how there was a time split due to the aligning of certain planets. So all along, there's been this alignment of heavenly bodies out there that has in some way shifted things. So being in this fourth dimension experience, it's the same time it's a wilderness. Yes, it's a wilderness. Yes, things are breaking down. Yes, there's chaos. Yes, there's polarization. Yes, there's pathologies showing up, racism, every ism that is on the body politic. But at the same time, I don't want to say it this way, there is a people. <sighs> Hear me. In the midst of all of that, there is a people. Of all of that that's going on, God has planted a people. I you to feel the Holy Ghost. You are a part of a people within the people. I wish I had my, uh, Tim, I wish we had the, the saying in the Keys of Enoch right now. It talks about a people within a people and a light within the light of a people and and I'm telling you, there's the people of the world in 3D, but there is a people in the midst of the people of 3D that are not the same kind of people as 3D people are. Come on, somebody help me. There is something about a people. You are a people, and that's why I ask you, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you attracted to sit and listen to a different storyline? Something inside tells me to. Yeah, we're fulfilling our contract. Because it's time. You are the product of a cycle or a season in time 4D. A time in which while everything is breaking down around you into chaos, it is a time for your creative codes to be awakened. Oh, there it is. Oh, thank you, Tim. This is so good. This is so good. This is what set me on the track of uh, uh, Soul Energetics 22 years ago, sitting in my office, and the book fell off the, the, the table, the bookshelf, and came to this. We, mm, we, a people... <laughs> Huh? Hear me, a people. 
We shall not suffer the negative irradiation or excessive ultraviolet radiation that will bombard the places of the earth. For we, a people, will inhabit the safe zones at the time of the great geophysical upheavals. Now, I went through years and years when people told me, I remember there was a preacher that told everybody to sell everything and go move to some farm in Missouri. You heard of these kind of things? You know, Ghana. <laughs> remember that bunch? that all po got poisoned because they thought it was in Ghana or it was here or it was there. You know, Jesus said, you can, you can look anywhere and go anywhere you want, but I'm not in the desert. I'm not here. I'm not there. I'm in you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thought adjusters, and I love that. I thought, I, I want to be a thought adjuster. People's thoughts need adjusted. You know, from old religious, third-dimensional, fear-based, there's got to be those who are the thought adjusters. Now get this, are now correcting and repairing our blood crystallization levels of ionized consciousness. How? Through what? Frequency attunement. This is why vibration and frequency had to be introduced to us in the midst of the chaos of the breakdown of three-dimensional world. There had to be a people who were attracted to vibration and frequency because that's going to take us out of the 12-tone frequency. I told you one of the tools for me, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to stick with this, was my early, early experience of going with my aunt over to the, uh, the African-American church on Saturday nights. Because I was on the radio, and she'd go over there, and they loved for her to sing, because she had that bluesy sound. And she would take me with her, and i sit there, and i listen to sing something like Amazing Grace, and then I went to our church on Sunday morning and heard them sing Amazing Grace. And I went, now wait a minute. We're all on the white keys. <laughs> amazing Grace, how sweet. Well, there's something going on here. Because, we, we heard Amazing Grace Sunday. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So uh, I believe this is a part of my, my retuning was to here's something from a more indigenous point of view of a different sound that began to be planted early in my mind. And that took me out of being boxed in by closed octave Western 12-tone temperament. See, you get into African, you get into Eastern, you get into Aborigine, you get into Native American, you get into all of those, there's a different sound. I'm feeling the day now, you know, I'm, you know I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it helped me. It helped me to realize and open up other, other neurons in my brain that was preparing me to receive downloads that would come later in, in my life like that. So the thought adjusters are correcting and repairing. And, and I've talked about how this, how, why the Bible is so bloody. It's a bloody book. Blood, blood, blood all the way through. But you can't throw the blood out or the book out with a baby. You've got to understand there's a reason why blood was to be kept into our consciousness because in the blood is life and the life is the light of all men. There's a consciousness in the blood. And when Jesus gave up his blood, that story... I had nothing to do, and I'm not questioning it about the cross and dying and all that, but he gave up his bloodline. See, they want to paint him as this poor carpenter, right? Isn't that the story? Poor, there's poor, poor carpenter. Look up the word carpenter. It means craftsman. I mean, he learned the craft of the mystery schools that were going on in England. His uncle would take him over here. He was a shipping uh, tycoon, wealthy. 
Then he missed 18 years. We don't know what he did. And he probably went into India and he went in, maybe he came over here in America. We don't know what he did. But he learned a whole lot of stuff in 18 years. And when he came back, he came back with a lot of his thoughts adjusted. He was no longer the product of being a, a Jew or a Hebrew or a man or anything. He became a new creation. He became a new model. Hear me. A new model. The model we're trying to read so that we see him not as just an example, but as a sample of what it will be to live the 5D life. When you're in 5D, you can speak to the molecules of the water, and they will hear you and listen to you. You will speak to the dead, and death will have to hear you. Come on, somebody hear me. You'll speak to those who are sick and those who are ill, and they will hear you. Oh, I love there's a story about Israel. And they, they ended up only as bones out in the wilderness. But it says, the prophet came through and said, Oh, Israel, hear the word of the Lord. And those bones started shaking, vibrating. And I tell you, there's some bones out there that need to vibrate. <laughs> that are pretty dead right now. And we're going to do it through voice. We're going to do it through tuning forks. We're going to do it through awakening bells we're going to do it through bowls how are we going to do it we're going to get new frequencies in to expand human consciousness now the last part of this says this is the making of a people you understand what i'm saying now a people within a people 5d within 3d this is why you don't fit in that's why you're the strange one in the family that's why you're the white or black sheep of your family or whatever. This is why you're the odd one. Because you are a people within your people. You can love your people. You can love your, your, your tribe, whatever. But I'm telling you, no matter what you do, you will be a people within the people. <laughs> yes. And a mind of light... Within a mind of light. Now listen to the last. With this change, the physical flesh, the temple of the higher garment, will receive a new garment of light. Is this the activation of the code of the solfeggio frequencies to activate our Merkaba, our light body? That's the question. I happen to believe that these six frequencies are a code. Or I believe they are the keys to the kingdom of God. I believe they are the keys of David. And I believe when Jesus said to Peter, I give you the keys. <laughs> when the key like on a door, it meant keys like on a sound. The key of D sharp, the key of F, the key of the, it was a combination of sounds that would open up the most holy place in you and you would have access to all that God is in you. And at that point, God in you becomes as you. And that's when you, the I am in you can say, I am God and feel proud about it. Religion. Who do you think you are? I've never said David is God. I've said I am God. Do you get it? David thinks he's God. No, I don't. But the I am in me is God. <laughs> Woo, okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So, we're going to talk about 5D just a little bit here, and I'm going to start with uh, some things I want to share with you in here. The fifth dimension holds unconditional love. Now, this is something we've strived for. I think we all have that's on any spiritual path. Now, religion talks about it. I mean, sometimes you can tune into a preacher on television, and they're teaching the, God, the love of God, and you're going, oh, this is pretty good. 
I can handle that. And then they just turn like on a dime and tear every bit of that down with all kinds of judgments and hatefulness of doctrine. Uh, and you go, what happened? What happened to the God of love here? And then become that Old Testament vindictive God who was everything, a sexist, racist, and all kinds of weird stuff. When you are a fifth dimensional person, you will become love unconditionally. You will become agape. See, we've tried to attain agape through eros and philia. These are the Greek words for all for love. We meet somebody, mm, looking good. Uh -huh, I think. I think I'm falling in love. I've always wanted somebody to look like that. I want somebody built like that. Whoa. What a horrible thing to start out a relationship on, on somebody's looks. Because it's going to change real quick. <laughs> so that's, you know, Eros. Eros, the thing. And, 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 and Eros has its place because it was, in, in, it was part of the evolutionary story so that we would be attracted to procreate and, and, and uh, pass our genes down to our kids. Uh, so that is, that is what that's about. And then there's the love of a friend, a love of somebody that you just love to be around and whatever, feel you. But agape is not the love of God, but it is the God who is love. Are you with me? It's not the love of God. It is the God of your love that becomes your love. And 5D, you become the love that you're attempting to be in 3D. Because I tell you what, you can practice that and then go to the restaurant or whatever and the waitress spills water on you does something like that and you react and you go whoops I'm supposed to show love <laughs> but it's not the norm of 3D I hope you understand what I'm saying the fifth dimension holds unconditional love and acceptance unity conscious and unbridled creativity you know you get in 5d you better know that you need to be at a level of consciousness to be careful because what you think and speak you will manifest in 3d it's kind of iffy mm -hmm. sometimes you get a manifestation we go Ooh. most of the time we haven't prayer's not always worked in 3d Positive thinking hasn't always worked in 3D. It works for some. You know, it's kind of 3D is where the wheat and the tares grow up together. <laughs> yeah. The result can be whatever. You never know how it's going to work out. 5D is not that way at all. You have unbridled creativity by the thought of your mind. There's no polarity in 5D, so we won't have Democrats and Republicans, and we won't have conservative and liberal, and we won't have all of these things that polarize us uh, into uh, division. But every man shall understand every man's heart as they day on the day of Pentecost. And every man understood every nation at the moment that the violent fire set up on their head in the upper room. Hmm? The upper room is a higher state of consciousness. And there is a baptism of fire that I'm looking for to really set on our heads and come down through the crown chakra and through the entire system of the major chakras that are connected to the 900 or so little chakras of the Nada system. And we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Oh my goodness. No polarity in 5D, but rather an energy of synergy and of teamwork. 
we will interact synergistically with one another to bring forth amazing creations. We will explore 5D in depth as we go along, for now we notice that when you feel loving and expanded, when you are living from your heart instead of your head, it is then that you are connecting with the dimension of your 5D. So we've tasted of the world to come. The Bible said that, uh, that there are those who tasted of the world to come. So using the example again of the Israelites, before the multitude went and got there, there were spies sent out to go spy out the land before the masses. And when they got there, there was these, it was in the harvest of the beautiful grapes and the harvest of the fruit was great. And you know what they did? They took some of that and brought it back and said, here's... What's waiting for you? Taste. I don't know about you, but I've tasted of an age to come in an age that didn't hear yet. And so we can taste of the age that is. The thing that's cool is it's coming. It's not just a taste of it, but we are beginning to enter. And by the way, I want to say when the children of Israel and that story entered into finally the land. It wasn't an easy transition into the land because they had to cross the Jordan. Jordan is death. And the cool thing about that story I want to share with you is that those who had led the 200 million or, or 2 million or so Israelites to that level who had been the priesthood out in front had to step in the Jordan so it rolled back so all the people that had followed them went in first. Oh, do you get that story? When the priesthood that had been, they'd been following all through that experience stepped into the Jordan, the Jordan rolls back and while they're standing there, all the people that had followed them went in before them into the land and they were last. And the first was made last and the last was made first. And this is why there has to be a people step in to the midst of death and roll it back so that many people. Um, an example would be sometimes back years I'd, when I had groups of people for 30 years. And I'd preach something and teach something and teach it and teach it and teach it. And nobody could ever get it or answer it. And then all of a sudden people started coming to me and saying, oh, I had such an experience last night. I heard the Spirit say, and I'm going, but I've been telling you that for 15 years. <laughs> but see, I had to have no ego. I'd have no ego to say, but I've been teaching that to you and you didn't get it. I had to realize, no, I'm standing in there, Jordan rolling it back so they can get it on their own without getting it from me. Whew. Sometimes I have to stand in places I don't like to stand in. Stand a back pain, a place of depression, a place of hopelessness. Don't think I don't. Don't think I'm like this 24 hours a day. I'm not. The one. Oh. Be careful, be careful. <laughs> be careful. It is true, it is true. He, he, he lives it, so he knows. And I saying, but when I do, I'm rolling back the Jordan for somebody to go ahead of me. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> there is a, this, I like what this calls it, a psycho-spiritual growth going on, a psycho-spiritual growth. This is not the separation of the mind and the spirit any longer. This is the coming together of the psyche and the spirit together to produce that which can cause a spurt of accelerated growth. Growth that connects with the emotional, mental, spiritual body is always non-linear in process. In other words, it's not body, mind, spirit, 3D. But it is spirit that is mind, body, and spirit. And that's why 
I started teaching you that was in the class a year ago, uh, this idea that we're in a paradigm shift of moving from body, mind, spirit to everything's energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Body, mind, spirit is only three different forms of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just as ice, water, and steam are only three forms of the same thing. Water molecules based on temperature. And all body, mind, spirit is, is parts of uh, spirit or energy in three different forms. But now we realize that that form is one thing and that is energy. So there is no separation between the body the soul and the spirit, it's all energy. And that's what Einstein and the early fathers of quantum physics brings us is this, this present, present truth. To shift from a 3D human to living as a 5D human is no exception. There may, a uh, may be a dramatic starting point, an awakening that opens your psyche to new possibilities. But just because we experience an awakening does not mean we will be able to proceed forward neatly. So nobody has promised us an easy ride. But we've been equipped for when it gets rough. And don't think you have it. Creator has not called us into anything that it has not equipped us for to go through. For I shall not put on anything more than you can bear, it says. So when you kind of feel at the end of yourself, guess what? Feel the end of yourself. Because the end of yourself is the self you are not. Huh? The end of yourself is the ego self, the pseudo self, the self that culture told you you were, religion told you you were. All of the things of the outer systems of 3D formed you into their image. And you're losing the image. You know, an image is an image. It's not the real thing. The image is what I see in a mirror. It's not me in the mirror. I see an image of me in the mirror. Hmm? That's not me. It's just an image of me. It's just a picture of me. I see pictures of me. That's not me. I'm not in the phone you just showed me while ago. <laughs> But it captured, it captured an image of me in the phone. We are now, it says, get this, we are now. Everybody say now. Now. Yes, now. Pinpoint it. We are now open to experience flashes of awareness. Flashes. Epiphanies. Epiphanies. A flash of 5D. A flash of yourself on a 5D level. A flash of your new body. A flash of a new earth. This should be taking place in all of us that we have these moments of these spiritual light flashes. Glimpses of that which we are closely heading for to experience. Noticing that our cells are vibrating more quickly. Oh, the closer I get to 5D, the more excited my, my cells get. <laughs> more my electrons start spinning. And my neutrons and protons start spinning and going around each other like, wow. <laughs> Something is just changing my whole vibration here. I don't know what's going on. And when that happens, guess what? You start having challenging sleeping patterns. Huh? Things are so changing. Eating becomes more of a challenge. What to eat is right. What is, all of that becomes different because of the change that is going on. And you are that change that is going on. And I don't know about you. You know, I try. Oh, my God. I've tried. Recently, I was on the keto thing. Then I read you shouldn't be on the keto thing very long. And there's so many voices out there. You don't know which one that you should be on, whatever. The best thing is learn how to be spirit guided. And listen to your body. And when your body wants meat, get some meat. Get some good organic grass-fed meat. If you don't want meat, then don't get meat. But if you want it and need it, get it. 
and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> and quit trying to follow the fad, the trend. See, everything gets trendy. And that, that's not good. So our cells are vibrating more quickly and getting inklings of the gifts that this brings. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I love the Bible says all creation is on tiptoe waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans 8. Romans 8. As humans, we have always had the potential to access the nine dimensions of consciousness. This is not something that has shown up that is new. In fact, I think we need to get out of new thought and new this and new that because new is something that's opposite of old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we need something we've never had before. Yeah, I think we need something that goes beyond the, the uh, old new idea and we just want what's spiritual. So we've always had access to the nine dimensions of consciousness, but because of our conditioned egos, most of this potentiality has remained beneath the surface of our awareness, and therefore we've been out of reach. Say that again. Because of our own egos, we have been, uh, we have kept our potential out of reach of our consciousness. And that's where religion shows up, because we think, and don't know we have it, we think we don't, and guess who shows up to says, we got it for you. <laughs> Come join our church. Come join our religion. Because what you don't have, we have got it for you. First, we'd like to have your soul, though. <laughs> and your money. We want your money and your soul. <laughs> if you give me your soul and your money, your, your mind, we'll show you how to do it according to our doctrine and our dogma, right? <laughs> dogma, yeah. Uh, so what's happening now is this, that we're in the reach of this potentiality beginning to awaken in us. We are making it through the canopy of 4D. There is hope at the end of the tunnel, the proverbial tunnel, whose access to these higher dimension frequencies begin with frequency of the fifth dimension coming into us. It is an important part of the journey to become 5D humans, uh, to become 5D humans, to have an open heart and to listen and follow your heart's wisdom. This is how you get there. What I, what I call the secret code was established as an imprint in the heart. Chakra. This is, five, this is why the 528 hertz frequency is so popular and one of our most popular tuning forks because it's a love frequency of the heart. 528. 528 of all these frequencies is the most worldwide known. There is an absolute movement out there for 528 hertz. So you that have that 528 fork in your forks, you need to use it around your heart every day and it will do great things to open that heart up and start releasing all of this coded wisdom that is held in the goddess Sophia in you, the goddess of wisdom. Okay. Let me just give you a little bit more on here. In the so the heart, I think that's why I was led to touch into heart math for a while and learn heart math as a practitioner. And you remember heart math a lot through Nancy Ennis who taught it beautifully back at Unity and uh, then we all, when I went to Columbus, I, I learned heart math and became a heart math teacher. And this is all based upon the science, actually, of uh, a different knowledge or wisdom is in the heart that's in the head. And the head has been in control of the heart. Therefore, it has suppressed her. 
him being the head, oh, somebody help me, for the man shall be the head of the woman, the husband over the wife. Look at it metaphysically. It had to do with your head over your heart. Hmm? Head knowledge. When, when she tried to come up with something, he'd say, but wait a minute, we don't believe that. I didn't qualify that as a belief. Therefore, be submissive to me and get back in your place, woman. And the Bible said for the woman to be still and go ask her husband. You that know the Bible. That's what it says. In the church, you do not speak and ask any questions, but you ask your husband. Think about it. Any Bible. Oh, New Testament. That's New Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of Paul's writing. Paul had a thing about this, you know, the women thing, whatever. And sometime I'll share you, with you somewhat while that is uh, going on. So the heart brings us into a state to be more mindful than the brain does. The brain takes us in and out quickly without us embracing the focus of the present moment now. Because it's always worried about the future and regretting the past. That's where most of the head energy goes. I wish I'd have done it differently. I can't believe I was that stupid. I can't believe I did that as a child. I don't believe I went through that. Oh my God, how do I become this? How to become that? And we are not centered in the balance of the present moment. And the ego does not want you in present time. In present. So. Um, we have to realize that uh, coming from the heart gives us a more mindfulness. We call it the observer. The observer. At this point, you start being a little bit more a part of you that's outside of the body. The body controls the, the, the perimeters of the body itself, but the mind is outside the body. And I, I had to have that experience, and I've shared it with you. I won't go through it. But I had that experience the moment that my mind was bigger than my brain because I realized my brain, it wasn't coming from my brain. It was coming from somewhere else to my brain. And I thought, oh, my goodness, where is that coming from? And that's when I discovered the mind was everywhere. I was in the mind. The mind is in me. God is the mind. Hmm? Here we go. Ready? Let this same mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. We'll just keep doing that till everybody learns it, because I don't, I don't want to put it on the screen. I don't want it to be a mental construct. I want you to let that become a living word in you. This might allow, let this might allow. I want you to get that. It means it's already there. You just haven't let it. But once you let that mind out of the imprisonment, of the confinement, of the third dimensional human existence, you will find your energy bodies outside. You'll find your etheric body, your mental body, your emotional body, your causal body, and your etheric body. And when you find that etheric body, you will find your perfect whole blueprint of your creation was already there at a frequency and vibration. Oh. Say that one more time in the uh, statement on right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Philippians 2.4. <laughs> Let this mind be in me. We could say me. Who? Let this same mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. Now you just defined there Christ consciousness. Okay, let this same mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that that God is, so am I. That comes from the mind, doesn't come from the brain. And while you're saying that, and the mind's saying it, your brain going, really? <laughs> uh-huh. 
Oh, yeah. And it'll show you every shortcoming you have. It'll show you every unbelief you have. It'll show you every, everything you think, believe you lack in will come up before you. And that's what happened to Jesus in the wilderness is all of that stuff came up. And the, they called it the devil. Uh, but the devil was the things in himself of his ego that he had to confront. And he gave no power to them. And when he came, oh, brother. And when he came out of there, I love the statement, and the devil found nothing in him. He was a pure, clear channel with no ego left in him. And that was when he was ready for his transcendence and ascendant. Do we really believe in the devil? Yeah, I do believe. No, I believe in the devil because I believe humans created one. <laughs> but I believe the devil is an image of ourselves. It's a projection of a part of us. Everything is us at some level. Yeah, I do believe in the devil. I, I believe the religion has created an image called the devil. And, oh, oh, oh. and what they have done is they have so believed in it, they transferred their power to the illusion of a devil to make it become the devil through the power of their own thinking. Thought is power. It's so powerful it can make illusions seem real. If you believe in a demon or a devil, then you'll make one. So let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Oh my goodness. Let's breathe. Let's take a moment. Now what I ask you to do is bring all of this I'm sure you didn't get every word and everything that I said, but your spirit got exactly what it wanted to receive today in the form of spiritual seed was planted in the spiritual garden of your consciousness. Now, if you leave that seed in there, that's fine. It'll just stay a seed. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to water the seed when you leave here. Mm hmm? Water your seed. You water your seed through contemplation, meditation, some research. When I mention some subject that you've never heard that before, you have the global mind at your fingertips. If you're not sure about what I said about blood, look it up. All you have to do is just put it into the global mind. And most likely the information will be in there. But you don't, here's, but I'm going to go further. But you don't want to take that information even on the computer or in the Bible or in a book as the source. What you want to do is take that information because it interests you. You read something, you go, that's really interesting. I, I, if it's interesting, then take it in. And lay it upon the altar. You create a visual altar in your mind's eye. And you lay that upon the altar in non judgment of right or wrong, good or bad. And your intention is Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of all the universe that is in me. If this is universal principle and divine law, then let it resonate into my consciousness until it becomes self-knowledge, not David's knowledge, not Reverend Ike's knowledge, <laughs> or whoever else that you're listening to and reading after. None of us are your source. Your source is your innate intelligence of the micro-universe that is placed in you the mind of God is the universal law within all of us breathe so today I take all that has come through and I lay it upon the altar I open my heart in receptivity to receive what the Spirit has to say 
to this community. Today I am changed. Today I am more awake. Today I'm expanding my boundaries in 3D. Today I stand where the veil has covered me from the most holy place, from the Shekinah glory of God's presence in me. Today I accept that 2,000 years ago, the incarnation of the divine rent that veil from top to bottom, opened this wonderful, wonderful dimension that we have not been conscious of but are becoming conscious of and we hear the message whosoever will let them come and freely partake of the riches of my glory her spirit would say it is not by accident that you that are here are here and you that are listening are listening for know the alignment of the time that you live in is important. If you will become more and more aligned with my mind, with your consciousness, together we will co-create new vibrations and new frequencies that will pattern themselves into geometrical patterns that have never been will come become new blueprints and new DNA for you've been the caterpillar long enough you have nibbled on that leaf long enough you have crawled on the linear line long enough look up look up when you see these things look up he said for what you thought you lacked was always there you stand at the axis of a time and a time. Your answer is not in another lifetime. It is not in the next of anything. This is the day of your healing and salvation. So I ask you to receive in this moment from the Spirit more of the consciousness of God into your mind and into your consciousness. Be still and know I am God. I say to my ego, be still from your analyzations, your past beliefs and miscreations. Be still and let the I am be the God presence in me and as me. And we all say, and so it is. All right. Hello. I like you. What's your, <laughs> who are you and what is your name? But you have a great presence, a great spirit. Nice to meet you. How did you find us? Oh, through. Ah. Oh. Good. He brought us another good one. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're glad to have you today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody have a... Oh, yes. Uh, by the way, before you do this, hold on. We are $300 less for our budget. 
So if there's anybody here that would really want to help today, we would certainly appreciate if you can. The strange part is it's all out of your class. Your class is handled. Oh, the class is, oh, okay. I think, I think we got the budget by a little bit over there. So it's just the class. The class is below, yeah. So uh, just want you to know that so you can be very attentive in your, in your giving. Uh, and as Reverend Ike says, nothing from nothing equals nothing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great rest of the day and week. And hope to see you Sunday morning at the 1115 class. Also, this is our youth Sunday. So if you have youth, and it's a cookout Sunday. And I know that's going to be good.